While discussing the anatomy of esophagus, I told you that there are two triangles, lamia triangle and a Killian triangle. And the pharyngeal pouch is an important uh, clinically as well as for your exam purpose. It's usually asked as short note. So pharyngeal pouch or Sengers diverticulum, pharyngeal pouch or diverticulum. or diverticulum or it is also called a Sengers diverticulum. What is that? This is anterior view and in the posterior view of esophagus, if I am drawing only the this part of esophagus, trichopharynx, most constrictive part, so then this is a posterior view. So, in the inferior constrictor is a muscle forming there. It has got an upper thyropharyngeus and a lower cricopharyngeus part. Inferior constrictor has got thyropharyngeus part and a cricopharyngeus part. And this thyropharyngeus part is going um, oblique, oblique fibers going backwards and upwards. Okay, this is thyropharyngeus. Uh, horizontal cricopharyngeus fibers. See, they are going like this. This is a lower cricopharyngeus. Uh, T O. Remember like that. That is the thyropharyngeus fibers are oblique, backwards and upwards, and the more horizontal cricopharyngeus. So in between them, there is an uh, area of weakness and diverticulum is actually an outpouching from a tubular structure. Okay, diverticulum is an outpouching from a tubular structure. From, so in this, from this tubular structure of esophagus, between the thyropharyngeus and the cricopharyngeus fibers of inferior constrictor, there is a Killian triangle which is the weakest area and through that comes the pharyngeal pouch or a Sengers diverticulum. And how this pharyngeal pouch happens? Already there is a weak, uh, weakness in the posterior wall of uh, esophagus. So when there is a neuromuscular incoordination, so uh, while swallowing or during swallowing, this uh, cricopharynx will not open. In this area, cricopharynx will not open. But the foot is pushed down. So what will happen? Foot is pushed down. But this cricopharynx is not opening. So this uh, mucosa will try to escape or the pressure will try to push it. So through this uh, weak, weak part, this diverticulum uh, or there will be an out pouching. Okay, so that is the reason for this uh, pharyngeal pouch. It is due to a neuromuscular incoordination especially in old age. And it is a posterior diverticulum. Posterior pouch. Okay. So pharyngeal pouch is a posterior pouch. Then uh, it is happening in the hypopharynx. So it is a hypopharyngeal diverticulum. Okay. So all these are synonyms of a pharyngeal pouch. Hypopharyngeal pouch or hypopharyngeal diverticulum. Okay. So this is how a pharyngeal pouch is formed happening because of increased intraluminal pressure. So it is also called a pulsion diverticulum. Intraluminal pressure is increased. So it is called a pulsion diverticulum. And this is not involving all the layers of esophagus. So it is called, it is not a true diverticulum. Rather it is a false diverticulum. Okay. So pharyngeal pouch or diverticulum, Sengers diverticulum, Posterior diverticulum, hypopharyngeal diverticulum, pulsion diverticulum and it's a false diverticulum. Okay, what is the presentation or complaints of the patient? How? What, what are the clinical features of the patient? So, if I draw at the lateral view, cricoid, trachea, the, uh, anteriorly and uh, green okay so
So the uh, oblique fibers of thyropharynges and the more horizontal fibers of cricopharynges. And this uh, pharyngeal pouch is out pouching from this. And the esophagus goes down. This is esophagus. Okay. This usually happens in elderly, usually above 60 years of age. Okay, elderly persons above 60 years of age. And what will be the presentation? There will be difficulty in swallowing. So, the presentation will be uh, dysphagia, progressive dysphagia. The thing is, when at one stage, the food will go through the esophagus and also a part will go to the pharyngeal pouch. And progress, there will be this uh, pharyngeal pouch will start enlarging. So, that what will happen? This will go enlarge, enlarge, enlarge. And it will become too big so that it will compress the esophagus. Okay, so it will start compressing the esophagus and also there will be regurgitation of food into the esophagus. So what will happen? So there will be dysphagia. Along with that there will be halitosis, bad breath. Because this food will, after, uh, after time, uh, uh, it will get collected in the pouch and after some time it will regurgitate. So, halitosis will be there. Then, regurgitation of food. Okay, regurgitation. And see, I already told you there is slight uh, uh, inclination or curvature of eso cervical esophagus into the left side. So, there will be a swelling on the, this will go to the left side. So, there will be a swelling on the left side of neck and also a gurgling sound will be there. You can feel a gurgling sound and pressing there. Is uh, heard on pressing the uh, neck swelling. Because I already told you, as this enlarges, this will cause, this will uh, form a swelling on the neck, especially on the left side. So on pressing that, you can hear a gurgling sound, which is called the boy's sign. Boy's position, what is that? Boy's position is a position for... Uh, Direct laryngoscopy and this is boy sign. Okay, so boy sign is seen in pharyngeal pouch. So there will be dysphagia, there will be halitosis, regurgitation of food, especially on lying down, and later this can lead to as it progresses, there can be aspiration, then cough will be there, recurrent laryngitis, hoarseness of voice, and even lung abscess can happen as a complication of this regurgitation. Okay, and that is boy sign. So these are the presentation, different types of presentation. You can remember it on um, remembering this anatomy and also this picture. Okay, so how will you diagnose? How will you diagnose? One is by the typical clinical features we already mentioned. Then barium solo, isn't it? Barium solo, which view, lateral view, because it is a Posterior pouch, this is lateral view. So you can see the fill, barium filling it. Uh, more precisely, it is a video fluoroscopic barium solo where the whole process of soloing is captured after giving a barium. So barium solo is the lateral view or video fluoroscopic barium solo is the diagnostic modality of choice along with the clinical features. Okay, so then treatment. What? How will you manage or how will you treat? What treatment will you give? The answer is very simple. We can, you can, we can excise the pouch. So, excision of pouch. That is one treatment. So, pouch can be excised along with what is the main factor? Trigopharyngeal sphincter is not relaxing. So, along with the excision of pouch, we can uh, do the trigopharyngeal myomectomy also. Isn't it? Excision of pouch along with the cutting the fibers of trichopharynx, trichopharynx sphincter so, so that it will relax. And another treatment, what is that? Sta excision, endoscopic, stapling, uh, diverticulotomy. 
that is a preferred method endoscopic diverticulotomy what is that if you look through an endoscope you can see the opening of esophagus on one side and you can see the opening of this diverticulum or the pharyngeal pouch on the other side here okay so in this what we are doing is we are removing this uh, partition between these two and we are making into a single cavity okay so this partition can be removed either using a carbon dioxide laser or stapler uh, diverticulum it can be excised and the row area can be stapled or uh, i already told you to carbon dioxide laser so this partition wall can be removed through an endoscope either using carbon dioxide laser or using staplers excision and stapler so that is a preferred method and the first this surgery was first done by dolman uh, so it is otherwise called a dolman operation so dolman surgery is for treatment of pharyngeal pouch okay so that is the management so um pharyngeal pouch is usually so many mcqs are asked asked from pharyngeal pouch it's a pharyngeal pouch or diverticulum there are different names for that it is through a killian stations otherwise called the gateway of tears and this is a pulsion diverticulum because of increased intraluminal pressure um mainly happens in elderly above 60 years of age we discussed about the uh, common complaint dysphagia regurgitation etc etc and the diagnosis is by barium solo and management the two method excision of the pouch and also endoscopic diverticulotomy is the preferred method okay thank you